so you know the story about Cain and Abel, right? So uh, Cain and Abel both make offerings to the Lord. Uh, the Lord only likes Abel's and not Cain's. Cain gets big mad and then bashes his brother's head in with a rock and murders him. That's bad. So what if we could back it up and actually sort of like find a way to prevent all of this? We try to, right? Because like, what if what if there was a way to figure out what Cain did wrong so that, well, we don't mess it up too? Uh, we, we spent a lot of time on this and the Bible doesn't actually say, which is frustrating, even though the Bible kind of says, which is comforting. Let's take a look. So Cain and Abel make offerings to the Lord. Uh, Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord only liked Abel's. And from this, we, we try to figure out why. And so we, we sort of assume that, well, Abel really meant it. And so he gave the very best that he could. And Cain didn't really mean it. He gave like the wilty vegetables, the funny shaped potato. Nobody actually wants to eat that. That's nasty. He gave that to God, even though it doesn't say that in the Bible at all. You're making that up. You're putting that in there and it doesn't fit. It's against the Eighth Commandment to assume the very worst of somebody when it doesn't say that at all. Now, just because he's a murderer doesn't mean he didn't try his best. In fact, I think the problem is that he tried his best. He tried his best, and you can tell that he's upset about it because his face fell when the Lord was not pleased with his offering. Like, when you don't try at something and then you fail, you're like, well, I guess. But if you try your best and then you fail, that's enough to put your face in the dirt. Here's where we find ourselves. So instead of just sort of assuming that Cain didn't try when I think he kind of did, what if we actually look at the scriptures as if they speak as a whole? And there's this pattern about God over and over again, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. And we have a God who insists that sin is so atrocious that only blood can cover sin. That's why in the Old Testament, Moses has the sacrificial system. That's why in the New Testament, that is fulfilled in Jesus, who was sacrificed upon the tree that his blood would atone for all of your sins. What if it's the same God working back then? We also know that we have a God who works through ritual. He says, you want this forgiveness? It's really easy to get. Splash a kid with some water. Say in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's a baptism. It forgives your sins. It makes you a child of God. What if God worked through ritual back then too? I know it doesn't actually show you how to do it because you don't have to worry about how to do it. But I bet he told Adam, even as he clothed Adam and Eve with skins of an animal, that they would no longer have to have like leaves that they didn't really work too well. They had to hide in the bushes too. But they would actually be able to look at each other as well. Adam and Eve teach Cain and Abel how to sacrifice. I can tell because Abel even though there, there's animals not necessarily for food right now, Abel, Abel knows to sacrifice one that its blood would cover his sin. He takes the fat portions of the firstborn of the flock, which sounds a little Jesus-y, and he offers it up to the Lord and says, Lord, you gave this animal that it would bleed to cover my sin. Thanks be to God. Cain didn't offer of what God had given. He offered of himself. God, look at the very best I can do. And that's the problem. The very best that we can do is usually not enough. In fact, never enough according to the law. So thanks be to God that worship is not, here's where I bring to God the very best things that I can come up with, but rather, Lord, let your blood cover all of my sins. The story of Cain and Abel, is, it's, it's a testament to what happens when not only you, you just don't try hard enough, but when you try your very, very best and it's still not enough, there is actually blood to cover your sins, your shortcomings, and offer you peace with God and with one another. Avoid the rock. It, it hurts the skull. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university, with values.